Uh, hi, Riman, we can't hear you. Oh, um, sh we started. Have we officially began? Yeah, we should start, Riman, just to... Okay, I'll begin. Okay. Hi, everybody. Uh, I want to welcome you all for joining us today. And I want to begin by saying that this is the beginning of a series of workshops and international events that we will be having this semester. And I hope it works out for all of us. And I hope to see your faces uh, now and later. And it's a big pleasure to start off the semester with Dr. Xiao Jin, where he will be talking about the effectiveness and the effective mechanisms to accomplish your coursework during the, uh, the COVID-19 pandemic. So I don't want to take up much of his time, so I'd like to invite him to begin speaking. Hi, thanks Rima for the introduction and thanks uh, uh, Department of International Relations for uh, starting this um, the, uh, uh, workshop and allowing me to be the first to share with you and together with uh, other faculty members and the students about the effective ways of accomplish the um, coursework, especially considering the, our situation now during the COVID-19, what would be the way to um, best strategies and practices to do that. Now, can you see the my screen now? Yes. Okay, great. So, um, I'll, I'll be facilitating the today's uh, um, uh, confront China's economic counter its aggressive coercive action to push back. Um, so, um, I'll be sharing with you uh, the the my uh, my personal and uh, experience about uh, the uh, instructing and designing. Uh, and uh, and uh, reckoning on coursework for the students. If, although this coursework is uh, not the whole thing about you know a student's progress, but is now increasingly is seeing um, uh, account for um, more and more uh, weight uh, in your academic growth, in your learning experience, and of course your assessment uh, uh, weight. For example, now it's forty percent of your overall grade. So I think we should uh, have a, such a, a workshop to uh, share and to communicate and also uh, to get your feedback about how what uh, coursework should be designed, how it should be delivered, and how it should be best accomplished. So that even during this pandemic, even we cannot see you face to face, but we still try our best to help you to, uh, to grow and to learn and to achieve. So today I'm going to spend about 30 to 40 minutes to, to briefly uh, talk about uh, uh, compo uh, three parts. First, the uh, components of types of coursework and expectation and assessment of coursework and the strategies and method to achieve coursework. So after that, we'll have uh, 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 some students and faculties uh, uh, if you want to offer your uh, feedback or your advice, suggestions, you're more than welcome to contribute. Again, it's a workshop. It's not a webinar or a lecture. It's not a one-sided thing. I want everyone, if as long as you have something valuable, you want to contribute, welcome. At the end, we might have time for Q&A. So without further ado, let me uh, start quickly 
Again, during my pr brief um, um, sharing, if you have anything you want uh, make a comment for, for on a specific point, just raise your hand and our moderator will let you speak if you want to add something. OK, just to complete this um, um, workshop more uh, um, successfully. So normally we when we talk about coursework, uh, we talk about assi assignment projects and exercises activities. So this activity are designed or given to you from our faculty to students. First of all, to fulfill assessment requirement and learning outcomes. I think this is a very standard practice across all the universities. And the, in the, all the uh, syllabus, we have to meet this standard that we, um, how to assess you, how to, uh, you know, um, make sure you uh, you learn and you consolidate, you review. And so that's the standard learning comes. If you pull out any learning come, whether, especially in humanities and social sciences, this is a must to, uh, to use coursework to assess students. And uh, secondly, uh, it's also not, not just for assessment, you know, it's not for that grid, you know, that's 40%. It's more than that, actually. So we give, assess, uh, give the coursework for students to preview or review the lectures and readings with the faculty may assign you readings, assign you a small project, or give you a pop-up quiz to test you to see whether you uh, you know, uh, learned or, or from the lectures and from the readings. And uh, so the especially the key knowledge points and uh, in some courses, we also uh, try to use coursework to see if you have mastered the, or learn to grow your skills, you know, skills to quickly read the uh, text or skill to analyze the text, skills to uh, find the main idea, you know, key, key concept, key theory from the readings, etc. You know, so this, uh, these things are done uh, like gradually, you know, through the semester, through the semester, through your four years or more here, you know, all this coursework are uh, gradually helping, helping to grow and to develop. Yeah. And also it's to train and develop your independent learning habits and your critical thinking and problem solving skills. So the coursework are supposed to, whether given to you as an individual coursework, individual assignment or group assignment, normally they are designed to, you know, uh, you can sit down, you don't have to, you think, and you how to accomplish, how to solve this problem, how to write a response paper, how to, you know, um, make an argument. These are all like to train your learning habits, you know, independently, you know. You can think and you can read and you can respond and uh, follow the way we uh, emphasize especially in, i think in human humanities and social sciences we want students to critically review or critically reflect critically read uh, and in order to uh, present uh, in, into your uh, in your coursework in your course and of course problem solving too and that's more related to the uh, higher um, uh, uh, like uh, higher grade years of uh, um, uh, uh, students, but uh, I think that's also one of the, our goals. And uh, also we try to integrate in-class learnings with extracurricular activities and experience. Here. What do you learn from your your professor, from your reading, and you want, you know, uh, combine what you have known previously or what you have outside of classroom, extracurricular activities or your personal life experience, you know, you reflect in your coursework. And lastly, we use the coursework to strengthen teamwork and communicative capabilities between the students. As you may know, especially during this pandemic, we are seeing, not seeing each other face to face. So this uh, coursework is the, the way for faculty and students to interact more and for between you, between the students to interact, to commonly to solve the problem, commonly to uh, frame our argument, commonly to accomplish our coursework. So there could be more. So if anyone want to add and contribute to this, uh, welcome, you are welcome to contribute, um, to raise your hand and uh, see things. So commonly, uh, we often use, these are like uh, from each professor's 
uh, you get the, this types of uh, uh, coursework, right? So readings and summaries, professor ask you to read a chapter or read half chapter and uh, or ask you to summarize this chapter, or sub summarize half chapter or discuss, uh, give you a few questions and you find answers from the readings. So this is, I think, very common one. And then uh, quizzes is another, it's uh, not exactly the uh, coursework, like, uh, but it's it's counted into the coursework grid, uh, at least in our university's case. So it's, it's quiz is not to supposed to, you know, uh, make it difficult for you to, you know, uh, but it's to, um, to test or to see if whether you learned uh, important knowledge points from the lectures or readings. And then uh, pr presentations, and it can be group presentational individuals, one or a few students uh, come in front of a camera or in front of class and uh, uh, without reading from the script and present the uh, topic or issue or case study, etc. And uh, because of this COVID, uh, sometimes I adopt this uh, short video uh, demonstrations or short video presentations. So we ask students to make a video, you know, then hand in as a, as a coursework uh, uh, tool. So that's uh, we we may also consider. So all this is trained to use your public speaking skills or your knowledge. Um, uh, demonstration skills you know then review essay uh, on a scholarly article or film or documentary on a recent event on a, a somebody's speech etc is uh, uh, another type of uh, assessment or coursework uh, I, I used it many times in my uh, class uh, and um, it so I, uh, students love it I guess uh, I used to give them a few articles for them to choose or give a few documentaries about the certain topics, uh, the same, or ask a student to comment or re respond to US election, let's see, or a speech made, made by Donald Trump. So review it and write a response or review essay. Uh, so normally this to train your critical thinking skills and your uh, analytical skills. And then we have another type of paper is a research paper, right? So you, we give you a topic or we give you a group, a set of topic, you choose one, and then you do research about it. You come out uh, with argument, with evidence, and with good, uh, you know, um, uh, writing and uh, references. So we see how your research skills, you know, your research capabilities and your writing skills. And of currently, uh, I also talk about uh, field work, webinar, virtual tour report. So uh, we ask students to go to okay, go to a labor camp or go to a, a, a like a United Nations uh, branch in Dubai or to a tour, and then we write a ask student to write a report about what you learned, what have you observed from there, or interviews or observation notes. So. I used to do something like uh, ask my students to go to interview the uh, clean, uh, clean, clinical workers, you know, security guards in University you know, Charger on campus uh, in the past. But apparently now it's much more difficult. But still, later on I will talk about how you can use technology, like like we are using now to um, uh, use technology to schedule a long distance uh, interviews, observations, and write notes and report about that to train your research skills you know, research method use. Uh, <clears throat> then uh, discussions, debates and role play often I will, assent, will be assigned to the students <clears throat> for them to, to have more interactive learning and to uh, practice their debates uh, skills, to, to practice their, um, uh, their critical thinking skills or role play, you know. Uh, for example, model uh, United Nations, model or uh, Arab League discussions, etc., to for them to uh, make the learning experience and host uh, coursework experience much fun. And the country studies, uh, case studies. Uh, uh, also, we have uh, um, uh, 
been often used to assign a country for 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 them to analyze to write a comprehensive uh, uh, report or research paper about that country yeah and uh, uh, we also need to uh, think about uh, in a more flexible way because in, especially during this covid 19 era so we want to see what are the other creative ways especially we welcome the students if you have a, whether uh, other good ways to uh, think ah, this should be the our coursework it's for fun and uh, it's for us to, um, good for us to to be um, to to practice to exercise we welcome your inputs and any time including um, today yeah okay uh, next part i'm going to uh, briefly browse like what are the expectation of uh, uh, faculty and uh, uh, students uh, this can be uh, useful or uh, for both faculty and the students so first of all let me see a room sum for this is for all the coursework i think for majority of faculty they all see like this uh, the process of doing the coursework doing assignment doing the project or doing the presentation is itself is uh, as important as the result actually the result you turned in for for grid so because this uh, this process of doing this act of doing is a way to train yourself, to practice yourself, to exercise yourself. So always you have to do, to do it. So try to use this opportunity to engage yourself, you know, engage yourself in the coursework. Don't rely on, you know, last minutes. Don't rely on, you know, copy paste things, you know. This is the, your learning opportunity, you know, on your own pace, on your own pace. And then we often expect students to hand it on time. And again, during the COVID-19 era, you have to check, you know, um, when you submit the uh, things, you, it's make sure that, uh, you know, the, um, the blackboard is working properly. Or if you are sending the email, make sure the professors getting your emails uh, properly. And uh, better if you sometimes you can give a receive notes, you know, receive notes when professor receive it and it's automatically generate a notes for yourself. So you can make sure ah, you submit it on time and before the deadline. And often some of the students, they saw the pro, uh, submitted, but uh, the pro faculty did not see it because of some technical issues or because some uh, like too many emails or buried together, et cetera, et cetera. So always make that clear. And most important uh, third point, I want to like, avoid plagiarism if you are required to do either presentation, review article, research paper. Uh, actually, if faculty they want, they can always, you know, find a way to check, you know, for plagiarism check, whether through Blackboard, from Google search, and there's a specific website, and uh, often they are free, called Handing, et cetera, et cetera. They can just hand in your, like, they can find out whether students wrote by themselves, copy page from, website or from it was produced by another student, you know because they can uh, p uh, match the writing um, content and styles so i always i this is the, the opportunity for you to learn by yourself you know you use this opportunity why why bother to plagiarize you know you can write as good as the, theirs you know why uh, borrow the others and what as i said what important is you did the you went to the pro, went through the process by yourself it's not the result it, uh, itself, right? So you went through the process that you learned. That's the more valuable than the greed, you know? And uh, so as a faculty, we uh, require ourselves to give a very clear instructions about assignment in terms of material under study, what are uh, and topic selection, deadlines, group size, time duration, format, delivery method, and uh, uh, resource tools, uh, target, etc. Uh, so I, I could have, uh, if time allows, I could uh, share one of the samples of I am doing. So in which I will lay out all these specific instructions. And uh, but if we lay out this instruction and students don't pay attention to it, then what's the use? So again, I ask you all the students to expect to carefully review and carefully understand the instructions. And all consult with instruction for clarification and advising if you need it. So if you don't understand instruction, what professor ask you to do, please ask advising anytime. Ask you, the faculty or ask the other students. So sometimes I find like I give, uh, I write very clear instructions, 
but students still come back to me said oh well, why how many how many members in one group i said lack like, what i wrote there three to five members you know why you ask me again so please first of all really 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 read the instructions and uh, so that you can understand what ex the faculty is expecting from from you so in most of the time if you fail to follow these instructions and you did not do the homework according to the instruction then you might result in a low mark low marks you know that's unfortunate so so pay attention to that and uh, in terms of grading uh, about assessment uh, our faculty also we uh, try to uh, develop and uh, uh, clear uh, grading rubric you know um, basically grading criteria for each component of the coursework for for example if it's a presentation like we will say okay one two points for your research two point for your you know structure and three point for your uh, oral performance and uh, two points for your q and a and the one point for your um, references so for example each section each component of the course i have a the certain marks for that that will be made clear very very clear to you right and even though like some papers like uh, um, research paper right it's very really difficult to uh, give this uh, clear cut grading rubric criteria and must be grid holistics but still we give uh, we try our best to give you like how much for the research how much for the content how much for the writing right uh, how much for the references, et cetera, et cetera. So these are um, uh, grading, uh, uh, grade uh, marks distribution. We try to make clear to you. So you are expect to review and understand those rubric provided to them for each assignment. When you have this rubric in, in your mind, you you will pay attention to this, your coursework that, yeah, I need to work on the content. I need to work on the research. I need to write uh, work on the uh, writing styles. I need to work on the uh, performance, et cetera, et cetera. So it will be fair to you. And uh, uh, even though you have questions, if you have doubt about your grid, if your, your marks, you, first you should check this, you know, the rubrics. And uh, if it's fair and it's, if it's, uh, you know, clear, then you, I, I don't think you should go against, uh, go to uh, you know, ask for faculty for clarification or for more marks, you know. Because the rubric is already there. As long as you do your homework according to the rubric, then um, why bother? You know, why bother? So that's uh, is, um, is what we do here. And the last part um, of my presentation today is like uh, I want to try to give you some uh, strategies and uh, method or means to when you actually start doing the uh, coursework. You know, what do you do? What do you do? Uh, so part here, I first give you some uh, um, more instructions for uh, uh, for the students or some tips for the students. First of all, you need to come out uh, like doable timeline schedule to complete the work. Uh, for example, the, the faculty give you the assignment in the beginning of the semester. It may be due in two weeks, in three weeks, in a month or at the end of the semester. So it depends on the so for each type of compo component coursework, you should uh, plan to uh, have a good plan. So better to start early, you know, don't wait until the last few weeks of the semester to finish your research paper. That will not be uh, good, you know. And also when you are planning, take into consideration of the contingencies. If in particular, we have a, a, a pandemic now, right? So try to make uh, like uh, enough time sufficient time a flexible schedule so that you unless something happened you still were able to uh, write your um, paper com accomplish your uh, coursework uh, on time and uh, one way to do it is a set to daily and weekly goal for example you're supposed to write 2000 words uh, research paper right so let's say you week uh, you write 200 uh, per week 200 words per week Right. And then after 10 weeks, you know, within three weeks, you can finish the first draft. And then maybe another two or three weeks, you uh, you re revise and make it final draft. So that's to, suppose you start working from the beginning of the semester. So then you can get it done. 
So normally use some a few days before the deadline. Don't like catch the deadline. That's what, you know, unless something, um, some mistakes happens, you cannot have no time to change, you know, especially at the end of the semester, there's exams, all the coursework has deadlines. So what do you do? So you have to start early and plan well, yeah? And second tips I want to share is like, uh, always uh, think well before you write or before you do uh, your work. Uh, make yourself clear, you know? So what are you going to do, you know? Are you going to make an argument? Are you going to, uh, you know, uh, write a summary? Are you going to present this idea, or this case, etc.? So you, you have to make yourself clear. Yeah, don't, if yourself is not clear uh, about this instruction, about the, the work you are going to do, you're going to do, then how come you expect the faculty to know, you know, what you are saying, what you are writing, you know, what you are presenting? So always think, think before you start doing it. <clears throat> And once you start doing it, you always engage yourself with the course content, which means read or listen to the recording or review the lecture slides, you know. So always it's a coursework, you know, it's always related to the course. You have to engage yourself with the course. Um, some of them, students, they don't read the text, you know, then they uh, start doing the coursework. Then your answer will not be satisfactory because the most useful and most available materials is just in front of you, your, the text or your lecture slides. You should use the theories, concept, method you used from your lectures, from readings to, to do your research, to, to do the review and to present. And if you have difficulties in that, you always consulting, communicate and seek advice from faculty, from your peers, even from your family and from your friends. So uh, don't shy, don't shy, just ask, you know. So this is the way of your learning, part of your learning process, you know. Uh, there's no uh, shame about it. But, so I don't know how to do it, it's fine. This is the, through this process, you will learn how to do it. Like this process is to asking, to researching, to communicating, to seek advice and seek help, you know. It's open book, you know, there's nobody watching you. So just do, you know, uh, do it. And the uh, next point is about resources. You know, where do you find resources? Besides the content from course content, some uh, uh, assignment ask you to, you know, to search, to do your own research, to find more uh, cases or more uh, materials. So make, avail make use of uh, available and reliable sources, yeah, reliable sources. So first of all, it's available. Now, thanks to the technology, and uh, you can search globally, you know, with the internet. So you find global uh, digital um, publications, digital books, news sites, uh, online videos, global learning platforms. All the universities, you know, Harvard, uh, Berkeley, MIT, the best university in the world, he, and have their um, open, the open sets for their materials, you know, learning materials or reference materials. You should make use of it, but make sure these materials are reliable, you know. So just don't just go to uh, uh, Google and find uh, like uh, unknown or untested, unidentified, you know, also um, unreliable website and cite them. So in each courses, I think faculty often provide what are the reliable sources, you know, what are the scholarly accesses, uh, scholarly website. So make sure you, you pay attention to that. And then teamwork, you know, many uh, coursework are teamwork and we ask you to uh, finish in, in a cooperative way. So this is again experience for you to learn how to divide the work, how to be a develop your leadership skills, how to communicate, how to negotiate, how to solve the conflict, how to solve the problems during this uh, teamwork uh, period. And often during this uh, pandemic time, I try to use online forums on Blackboard discussion groups, WhatsApp uh, groups, Zoom meetings, like this kind of uh, encourage you to interact. Uh, try to be positive when you are interacting with your Peer, right? So if you don't like the idea he's proposed or she's proposed, just to see what's the alternative, what is the better way. Don't just uh, to to be a, like a 
uh, criticize or negatively deny whatever others effort, you know, try to be positive, always give positive encouraging so that your team work in a pleasant way. And lastly, we ask you to use the technology and tutorial resource wisely. Besides the reliable resources and uh, it's, uh, we ask you to reach out to to uh, IT, you know, University of Chicago has a very good IT team and they are very helpful actually. They use teams to like a uh, team screen uh, screen sharing to uh, teach you step by step how to use all these kind of technologies for for your learning procedures. Okay, and lastly, in case all this could happen, you know, in case you know, even you get good support from IT, but things could happen, you know. So always back up your work, you know, uh, because most of the things are done online now. So uh, please back up your homework, you know, especially your research paper or this long, big uh, homework. You know, unless, uh, in case it lo got lost, your uh, your computer uh, breakdown or internet got lost, you still save uh, can save your data, save your data. And uh, this uh, strategies and the me means too is mainly to I want to share with some of our faculty members including myself uh, to, you know, and also I want students to know that, OK, this is what we are doing as a faculty in order to, for you to accomplish the homework. So please uh, uh, understand this part and so that uh, you know what we are doing and uh, you know we are here to help, to support, and we are here to clarify. We are help to help to grow, to accomplish the coursework, you know. Um, not make it your life miserable. So very clear. So first of all, we, we want to develop this online uh, learning and teaching with balance between flexibility and structure. In particular, I think during this pandemic time, we know some students uh, maybe have family members, have uh, you know uh, infections, and they might encourage uh, this uh, uh, travel restrictions, etc. So. I tried to create some, um, you know, um, different tracks of the coursework so that students have a chance to select. For example, I tr uh, create a pass A. You can write a research paper uh, for the same, uh, 20 percent, let's say, a big research paper. I'll pass B and you take uh, two quizzes and uh, one small article. So so that you call them to the student circumstances. And according to this pandemic situation, we can give you some flexibility to accomplish your coursework. And secondly, uh, again, our coursework are student-centered, and uh, we try to always um, have student input in syllabus, assignment, and even grading rubric collectively. So I found sometimes if I, in the first week of the uh, class, I said, oh, this is my, you know, my course, the schedule, the size, assignment, assessment, and grading rubric. If their students uh, have some comments and have concerns, uh, we can uh, adjust that. So there's all oh, this um, research paper is too big, you know, too long. Like I, if I give you 5,000 research paper, maybe that's too long. So we'll adjust it to have it into like 2,000, right? So this is uh, something we can, um, we welcome your input, we welcome your um, uh, uh, we welcome your express your opinion and uh, your concerns. We will try our best to accommodate. And uh, uh, lastly, uh, I'll catch, um, not the least, we try to match in the coursework requirement and assessment with student level and prior knowledge and the workload. So we uh, was, again, we will try to balance. We try to give uh, you know uh, uh, accessible reading, you know. Uh, 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 thinner textbooks, you know. Some textbook I used before is like 600 pages. But uh, if we can find alternative, better textbook with uh, less readings, still deliver the same knowledge, you know, same uh, uh, same skills, then we would adopt, you know, the the thinner text so that you can have, you know, a, a more in-depth uh, readings and analysis of the text. And others, I think our university has been doing very well, but I just want to encourage here today, you should uh, cherish the opportunity. For example, in, uh, our university and our department of college has been doing this proactive advice, 
advising and mentoring with group meetings. So we all get advices, we all hold advisory sessions. So this is an opportunity for you to ask questions about coursework, about exams, about the readings, etc. all the things. And any learning difficulties and challenges, you should express this. So actually the faculty now come to you. It's not you come to us. We are uh, setting up this uh, advising session for you to ask the questions. So you should use this opportunity, opportunities. All right. So this is uh, some just my brief uh, sharing. And then uh, this part, part five of my workshop today is I would like to hear from another faculty, uh, other faculties or students uh, to share about your uh, strategies, method or um, your experience of uh, coursework. For, for example, we can uh, talk about what is the most used assignment type like uh, to in our department or in your department in your in your course and what is the most effective assignment type both from a faculty and students what what do you think and uh, what are the main difficulties in completing the coursework what are your challenges you see i put all this blank if i when you have input i'll put uh, write them down and so that later on we can uh, uh, share, you know, we can share. And of course, what is the best practice to successfully complete uh, uh, com or complete the coursework? What what do you learn from there? Okay. And what are the most for useful tools and resources you have used in your course? So these are the uh, uh, questions I, I would like to know from you. But of course, you are welcome to address other. Team. Uh, if you uh, want to uh, contribute, uh, please raise your hand and the uh, moderator will let you speak. OK, anyone, uh, thank you. Thank you, Professor, for speaking. And you did raise a lot of great points that I actually wanted to share. Um, but thank you for everything you said. And for now, anyone who has a question or contribution that they would like to discuss here with us, please raise your hands and I will say your name so you can open your mic and start speaking. Does anyone have anything to contribute? Okay, Dr. Sherko, you can go first. Uh, first of all, I just would like uh, to thank Dr. Shojin for this very informative uh, uh, presentation or workshop. I, I really benefited from it, so thank you very much. Uh, one one point I just want to share with you, maybe something. It's not uh, uh, just you. You just lastly mentioned uh, that some textbooks are long. Uh, in my case. Uh, uh, it, it doesn't matter whether the textbook is long or short because I normally select what I want to select from the textbook. So even if the, I don't have to cover every single chapter, I don't have to focus on every single chapter. So the chapters that I focus on uh, will be uh, covered uh, only. Okay. The most important, the most relevant uh, uh, topics uh, for, the, for the course. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Dr. Sherko. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Sherko, for, for your input. And next we have Salem, if you would like to speak. Um, yes, yes. So good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Salem. I'm a third year student, and uh, I just want, I would like to thank Dr. Shaojin for this uh, very good workshop, excellent workshop. So yes, yeah, so I just want to share one point. Uh, I just want to share something that I usually do to in regard to uh, coursework. And uh, it's, it's a good thing, you know, but some students don't really like it, don't uh, really do it. I think half of the students don't really uh, do that, but it's good. It's a good thing. I really enjoy doing it. So I'm just going to share it and uh, inshallah mathen, someone mathen, does it you know, in the future and inshallah he uh, benefits, uh, he or she benefits uh, from it. So the thing that I do all the time is break down the assignments, okay? And whenever a professor tells us about something specific, mathen, mathen, during the add and drop day, add and drop a week, and he said, mathen, okay, we need to do this and this and this, and he presented everything. So 
I usually start doing it since day one. So from the first day, I start working on it, but not finish it, of course, because this is really you know not a good thing to do. And to finish all your all, all your assignments since day one. No, what I usually do in the write everything down, break it down into like different parts, and I start doing it from day one. So, for example, method and if the professor method and told us to do method and a proposal, a research proposal, a small research proposal, which you know the submission will be um, a month after. Okay, um, what I usually do is just like break down what I want to do, right, and do it like every two days or three days. So I have one month. I break the I break out the work or break down the work, okay, and do it and do some parts of it every two days or three days. And this is really good, guys, because you will have time. You will not worry about it. We will not worry about it because you will just like you will know that, okay, after one month, I'm going to submit it. So you have different parts to work on. Okay, so research proposal, for example, I'm just going to choose my research questions. Then I'm going to put, you know, the research questions, the, the key research questions. Then after month, in two days, three days, I'm going to work on another part. But of, of course, the submission is after one month, but I'm working on it since day one. Also, this, of, of course, applies for other things as well, for the article reviews, for uh, present also presentations uh, and debates and so on. So work on what you have to do since day one. Once the professor announces it, and you, professors don't usually announce it, like, of course, on the add and drop week, they usually do it uh, maybe like, the second week, the third week, some professor do it, you know, before the midterm, no, no, not before the midterm, maybe before the midterm, but then by three weeks. So we can do it after the midterm. So once the professor announces the assignment, do it. Once uh, the professor method chooses the topics and everything and gives you the topic and to tells you method to form your groups, put the, once he tells you, put the topic and break down what you, you're going to do and do it from day one. Break it down. Do this part today after two days three days do it in the first weekend we can do it just parts of it you know and then by the end of the month method if you need method to submit it you will be done and it will be perfect trust me i always do it and i enjoy doing it to be honest and it's good i just like get you know uh, full marks i lose method and one mark two marks which is you know it's fine so i got i get good grades because i break it down but students some students don't do this some students just wait wait for, you know, like a week before the submission date, five days, six days, four days before the submission day, and they do it. And this is wrong. Half of the students do this, to be honest. And I think everyone agrees. And half of the students do this. Change, if you're doing, if you're doing this, guys, change it today, like from now. Change it, and inshallah, it will be good. So yes, thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much, Salim. It's like a nice change to see people actually dedicated to, you know, getting work on time and starting it from day one. Uh, we have Sheikha next, if she would like to speak. Hello, can you guys hear me? Yes, yes. Okay, thank you. So I don't really have a particular point to talk about or a discussion to start. Uh, but I just wanted to thank the coaches or trainers for such an extensive and informative session. And I'm definitely looking forward to other workshops. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Sheikha. Thank you, Sheikha. Uh, we have Rufaida next. Yes, hello. Um, just wanted to share like a few sort of tips and a few points that could that personally really helped me. Uh, and sort of like achieving and getting work done in time. And it's just sort of like adding to what Sadim has said or Sadim has said. Um, because, you know, of course, everyone has their own sort of way of being effective and being and getting work done effectively. So this is just to add on top of it, just to, you know, because there's a variety of ways that you can get your work done effectively. What I do is like, I, I just go through the syllabus at the, at the very beginning and like see when is the work due. Because from there, I can just like put it into my agenda, which is very important to put it into my agenda. Um, because again, you don't have just one course. You don't have two courses. You have four five or even six and seven courses a semester. And each they have their own assignments, their own projects. So th that's very important to keep in mind because from there you can put down the dates, even if it's a, just an approximation or just the week of submission for each course. Um, 
in your agenda. And it's very important to do that because you'll be able to visualize how much time you have until you have to submit. Um, and not and, and breaking your work down is also a great way of, of, of getting your work done because if you just look at it as it is just the coursework that you have to do, it just it's kind of like gets overwhelming because you don't know where to start. But breaking it down and like setting achievable and like sort of smart and realistic goals, it, it makes it much easier to uh, get the work done. Um, and that's that's all I have really. Thank you so much, Rafaida. Like that was really helpful. Does anyone else have anything to say? Any contributions? Um, well, if no one's going to raise their hand, I would like. Oh, okay, Dr. Sherko, you can go next. Uh, thank you, Riman. Thank you, Dr. Shoji. Uh, I also would like just to share something with students, uh, especially when you're doing teamwork. I mean, when you're doing a research paper or just any project that uh, you're not working by yourself, you are working with other people. Uh, first of all, uh, I, I want to say that it is very important that during this uh, kind of work, uh, uh, group work, you need to develop your teamwork skills. Uh, but what I found from students in the last uh, previous years is that normally students uh, divide the work between themselves, which is good because that's that's what the teamwork is about. But students don't check the work of other students and that makes them that sometimes uh, part of the research paper which is done by one student sometimes it is not relevant to the whole topic sometimes you see it it's just uh, pieces of works just combined together which generally doesn't make sense also. Sometimes one student uh, part is very weak and that affects the grade for the whole, for the other students, which may did very uh, good job. Uh, so make sure that please, uh, that when you're working with other people, uh, that you are in a constant communication and that you develop uh, work that is by everybody's standard, not only by uh, and, and, and in this in this kind of circumstances, I, I found that the students, the hardworking students, are normally losing marks uh, simply because they're not uh, telling the other friends to make a greater contribution. So please make sure that that group work is your work uh, and that you have a say in everything. Check everything. Sometimes you see that. A student is doing very good referencing, but uh, halfway you go and you see a, a section done by another student with no referencing. But in generally, you're going to lose mark out of this. And uh, I'm not going to mark you individually because this is a, a group work. And the last thing I want to say about the group work, please try to raise the standards up. Uh, especially for the hardworking students. Don't go to the standards which are lower than you. Try to bring the other students' standards up. And that is what the teamwork is about, that to make sure that other students uh, can do uh, greater works by pushing them harder to raise the standard. Uh, and thank you. Thank you, Dr. Sherko. Yeah, it was great. Thank you, Dr. Shirko. Rafaida, again, you have something to say? Yes, because, well, Dr. Shirko just uh, shared, remind me of, of something as well that, well, two things actually, it'll, and I'll just make it real quick. Um, for the group work, when it comes to group work, it, you know, there's a variation of levels. So like I personally had experienced it and it was very, very frustrating, but it just sort of taught me to be very understanding of like people's different backgrounds because not everyone has the same educational background. Some people could be more advanced than others. Um, and that then they're just not to blame. Uh, you just, you know, you know, have to be more patient and uh, understanding to those teammates. And the second point is that, you know, when it comes to research paper, um, try to choose something that you like and you're passionate about and you would like to read more about because and you would like to investigate because when you do that, you will look at the work as something that you would like to do and 
hence you become sort of subconsciously you become more of a per perfectionist and hence you sort of like guarantee a higher grade when you do something that you like or you're investigating something in, that you like. So yeah, thank you. Thank you. Uh, I wanted to say something to add on to what Rufaida said. A lot of the times when we're doing like our project or we are like get like we're getting ready to complete something, we feel like it's a burden or we just feel like it's just a huge load of stress that's on our shoulders. But you have to remember that like education or academia isn't something that's done to you. We all participated in entering university at our own free will. So you have to remember that this is something you willingly did because it's something that you prefer like prefer or you enjoy. So don't think of it as something that you have to get done, like something that you just have to finish. Think of it as something that you willingly chose because you want to achieve. And a lot of the times when we're trying to get our stuff done, we tend to like sacrifice something in order to get it done because we're doing it last minute. So we get like, you might end up neglecting your, you know, your mental well being. So, uh, like, in addition to like, you know, being uh, like to having time management, to focusing on getting the time, like the, like the task done or getting like, you know, just completing everything. It's just that you have to care for yourself and your mental health as much as you care about your future. Because if you are in a like bad state of mind, you realize that the work that you complete or you accomplish isn't as successful or as perfected as you would like to like it to be. So if you ever like feel like you're you know, burning yourself out and you're just constantly thinking it's, it's, it's okay and it's important for you to take a step back, take a break and then continue doing it. So all of this advice about time management, all of this, it's very, um, like, it's very important, but it's, it's as important to take care of your, you know, to your, your tasks as well as your mental health. And yeah. So anyone else would like to contribute something? Okay, if no one, I would like to, um, because it's, I do have a section for Q&A if time allows. Do we have time? Already in six, but maybe uh, if we somebody, uh, anyone has questions, or I, I would like to hear from you, like whoever we want to see, like what are the like, uh, most common difficulties uh, in comp accomplishing your coursework? I would like to hear from students, like, uh, why you couldn't uh, accomplish, uh, you know, complete on time, or why you didn't couldn't get a high marks, or why you feel uh, depressed about that? What is holding you? So maybe we can uh, find a way to overcome these difficulties. You know, when we are designing the coursework or uh, to change the method of delivery or etc. What is the difficulties here? Anyone would to share? You know, this is your uh, like you can uh, text in the chat box if you like, or you can raise your hand. Uh, I mean, uh, it's it's your, your time to uh, like vent if you have some concerns or comments about. Oh, professor, this is too hard. Please show. Yeah. Uh, we have Rafaida, I think. She I know is. I spoke a lot <laughs> already, <laughs> but. Um, I think the challenging parts or like Professor Xiaojin just asked of like what makes you depressed or what makes it hard to achieve something. It's even like for me personally, from my personal experience, and especially last semester, um, like even though like I tried to t manage my time as well as possible, it was it was still a, a very difficult time at home in my personal private life. And so but I didn't like I, I, I didn't want to let that sort of affect my grades and affect how well I'm doing. And though it was hard and I, I, I ended up doing OK, um, but I think accepting that it's OK to have these kind of problems and it's OK to not do as well and to accept that and be OK with that is the first step. And then trying to um, find support from the faculty around and or just going to the advisor and telling them, hey, it's a bit of a difficult time because of X, Y, Z, if you would like to explain. Um, and then just they will help from there and just being comfortable with that. Because for me, I was not comfortable like to tell anyone that this is getting difficult for me. Uh, but and I wish I had shared it sooner uh, in last semester. Uh, but doing that is actually helpful and the instructors will 
will help you the they will they will not mind it they will not look at it as you're running away from you know responsibilities or anything they will be understanding about it because you know life happens so um yeah Uh, thank you, Rufaida. We have uh, Dr. Sherpa. Uh, yeah, thank you again. Uh, me, just like Rufaida, it looks like that we are... <laughs> no, thanks for your contribution. Yeah, you really, really valuable. Uh, first, first, just before I make my comment, I just would like to thank uh, other faculty members from the college who attended this, uh, uh, this session. Uh, we really appreciate their uh, presence. Uh, one thing I probably suggest maybe to faculty members uh, to make it easier for students to do their uh, their work, and that is to give the assignments quite early in the semester and make sure that they're not uh, uh, requesting uh, the due dates uh, to be in the last uh, days of the semester. Just kind of, so two things. One is handing over the assignments quite early in the semester. So, for example, in my case, I already gave the students uh, the both assignments that I asked them. Uh, the, the other thing is that spreading the due dates throughout the semester, not just pushing all the uh, all the assignment due dates to the last uh, dates of the uh, semester. And because if, if the students, they, they find, oh, sir, I've got another assignment. Oh, sir, I've got another assignment. Oh, sir, I've got another assignment. And when is this assignment? It's only the two last weeks of the semester before the exam. We should spread the due dates throughout the semester. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Sherpa. We have Salem. Um, yes, can you hear me? Yes. Yes, I just so I just want to talk about uh, something that really disturbs me and I think disturbs most of us, uh, especially the professors, is that um, when it comes to the coursework and when, when it comes to essays and research papers, what really disturbs me, to, disturbs me is that some people buy their essays and buy their research. I know that I should not talk about this here, but I really want to say it, say something so that the students and the professors know about this. Some students buy their essays and in the problem is not with buying your essay, the research. No, what hurts me is that some students lose marks to others. Yani. They lose marks because these students bought their essays in it and they have good essays and perfect essays. Mathalan, if we have a topic, OK, and Mathalan, I wrote my essay by myself or someone that wrote his essay by himself. And then other uh, the other students bought their essays, I will lose marks. And professors do this usually. They look for Mathalan, OK, well, other students wrote his essay in a good way, so I'm going to give him full mark. But th but this guy, I'm going to Mathalan take one mark or two marks from him. So this is really not good. So please, guys, and please, um, not to students. I'm not like advising you, like Mathana. So I'm not, like I'm not talking about the issue itself. I'm talking about the issue that Mathana, when you buy your essays or research, other students lose marks, not because you bought it or not. Okay, you don't want to learn. It's fine, but like no, it's not fine. Not but fine. it's like no, no, it's not fine. No, no, but but no, <laughs> but uh, it's not fine. But I'm just like focusing on something. Is that others lose marks? not you, okay, you didn't learn, you don't want to learn, but others lose marks, you know, because when a professor comes and, and marks the, the essays, when he looks at this essay paper, which, you know, a student's boat, uh, it's perfect, it's perfect, good, perfect, and everything, so he gets a full mark, and the others lose marks because of this. So please, professors, this is a message to the professors, change the way, you know, change some, change some, th some things in the coursework. Okay, give an essay, a research paper, but also include a presentation, include a debate, like Dr. Shemal. I really love Dr. Shemal's classes, oh my God. Okay, include a debate, include a tour. You know, let's go to some, let's go, to, let's go somewhere to a museum. Sharjah has a lot of museums. Okay, not now because, you know, due to these circumstances, but Sharjah has a lot of museums. Why not go there and write a report? The guy will not be able to buy it. The girl will not be able to buy it, and I will not lose mark because in a lot of courses I lost marks because of this. So this is really disturbed me, and it disturbs others, you know. So please, professors, add some other things to the uh, you know coursework: presentations, debates, 
and um, you know, tours, uh, writing a report, go to somewhere, write a report, and so on. So yes, that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Salem. Thank you, Salem. Uh, we have Rufeida. I was speaking again because Saddam just triggered a very um, hot nerve that I have because when it comes to like buying essays, it's something that I am against with like burning passion. Because when you think about it, like even though like it damages other students, if I was an individual, uh, God forbid, that actually buys the essays, I wouldn't care about other people's grades. But I feel like when you put it in a different perspective, or like say for example, a doctor when they were doing their bachelors, all their essays were bought. You know, with essays, it's not just like, it's not just doing it for the sake of it. There's a lot of critical thinking that, that is developed through essays. There's a lot of analytical skills that are developed through essays. There's a lot of skills that are developed through essays that you cannot develop effectively in other ways. So doing a research paper and developing it and writing it is not just for the sake of it. It's because of these skills and because these skills are important. So if, and it's unfortunate this this whole phenomena sort of of buying essays and buying assignments is it's on the rise. There's a lot of courses that I am in sort of like in WhatsApp groups and it just promotion after promotion of like we are a group of experts who can do your assignments <laughs> in a timely manner and all that. And it's like and even graduation projects, and it's like what's the point of getting an education and paying and doing all of that? And then you just go and buy your assignments when your skills are not getting developed. So imagine a doctor doing that and then that doctor with no analytical skills, with no sort of critical thinking skills or any of that just coming in and you're their patient. It's kind of like destroys the whole field and the whole education uh, sort of in, as, as a whole. And it's, it's just, of course, not like immediate, but eventually it will get to that point where it's not doing well. It's just a decline or recession. So I think students should like it's not just the instructors because there's only so much that they can do it's also the student themselves they should take it upon themselves to do the work and not get the work done for them okay thanks uh, salim and ruhit for raising this important uh, uh, kind of uh, issue uh, in fact though our faculty we we you know we do uh, have very strict uh, rules about this if we have find out this, the student will result zero uh, the, for the course, uh, for the assignment, or even fail the course. You know, uh, normally the you know blackboard has a, a safe assignment, uh, checking whether you are writing from uh, you are taking from internet sources or from another institutions. Uh, same work, but even more so, there's other uh, third party. Uh, software now if professor if we want to use it if we are suspicious of your work is not done by you because we can see it you know for example our students he's not contributing to class discussion he's doing poorly in exams how come he write a, such a perfect paper that's impossible so we will use our own way resource to investigate this and uh, i warn you if you are caught by this definitely you will end up very miserably, you know, you will lose money. The university has very strict rules. And uh, of course, uh, Salim's uh, suggestion is good. We, uh, we need to diversify our assignment types, which not only about research paper will uh, maybe limit uh, the students, uh, you know, the uh, students uh, drive to uh, uh, drive for buying the paper. But most important thing I just mentioned in the presentation and also Rafeda uh, echoed that is this is a learning process, you know, it's your learning journey. You know, if you are spending your time, spending your money in this university, in this department, and buying essays to get the grade, and I'm, I'm, I'm worried you are just, uh, you know, um, wasting your life, you know, it's not just wasting your money. Even you get a, a grade, you are, you are lucky, okay, professor didn't find out, or professor did not pursue you on this, and how can uh, you cheat this in your life? After your graduation, after you uh, you start working, go to the society. Can you do this? No. You know, so best is to learn to be uh, to be honest, to train your skills, learning skills, analytical skills. Even you write a poor article, and it's yours. You know, it's yours, and you got uh, uh, practiced. And uh, our faculty, we see, yeah, it is your work, and you made the effort. 
the process and effort sometimes much more important than the result. So please, uh, for those students who are thinking of this option, please uh, don't, don't do that. Thank you, Professor. Um, would any professors, other professors like to contribute? We've heard some from students and, you know, if any professors would like to give advice or ask questions or contribute, you're also welcome because no one's being graded here. <laughs> um, I would like to contribute by saying, um, like a lot of, like we were just talking about um, buying essays and all of that stuff, but I think it's important that like we, we like stray away from collective punishment because a lot of the times some students actually try hard to get their work done, but then they get, you know, like one student slacks off. So the whole class gets punished as a result. And obviously like being my fourth year in this, uh, in this university, I've experienced it where some students like are caught cheating or caught buying essays. So as a result, all of this, all of the class struggles and it just makes it harder. So I think what we need to realize is that we're like, when, whenever you're taking a course, you become part of a group. So you you are working with those other students and whatever you do affects them as well. So if you are struggling, don't go to the, like don't result in the shady way of trying to get things done because we're all in the same boat. We're all trying to get the same objective completed. So if you are struggling, understand that there are other people with you and you can ask them for help because they could know something that could help you finish this faster or in a more efficient way because you guys are on the same team. Thanks, Rima. Yeah, that's was good advice. All right, so. If there's no more questions and uh, comments and the contribution, we will ask Rima to conclude. OK, so uh, I'll ask one more time if anyone would like to contribute anything or share. The floor is available now. Um, but if you are all done, I would like to thank you all for coming. Um, it was really informative and I think it's important that we have a lot of these workshops, like a lot more of them than we like uh, than we usually do. So uh, as I mentioned before, like this is just the start and it was very great to have to start it with this and with Dr. Xiao Jin talking to us about the effective ways of coursework and it was very in a way, in, like, in a well timely manner because all of us obviously are starting our assignments now and our midterms are coming up so it's very important for you to be able to understand what are the qualities that help you in order to you know complete your work and do it correctly efficiently and in a way that satisfies you like maintains your mental health and everything so thank you all for coming and i hope we see you again and thank you dr Xiaojin. and for anyone else who contributed today it was very informative thank you all thank you rima and thanks for all the contributors See you soon. And I just would like to thank again Riman and Hala also and Dr. Shoji. Thank you. And thank you every single student who participated and other faculty members from other departments who participated. And we should encourage uh, students uh, even more to participate in even larger numbers in the pre in the upcoming uh, events. Thank you, everyone. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye.